Having just ordered the Modulus Rox 15, which is supposed to be a or based on the um, Vox AC 15, within days of putting the order in for that, this little lovely thing turned up on a uh, local site. Um, it's the Laney VC 15, which is basically considered to be Laney's answer to the VC 15. They also did a uh, AC 15. They also did a VC 30, which was supposedly their answer to the Vox AC 30. Now, this was at such a bargain price that I just basically couldn't leave it um, where it was um, and went straight out and uh, bought it. It's been in storage for quite a long time. The two main complaints you get with Laney amps of this period, these were in production between 2005 and 2008, is that the top panel um, decals or uh, transfers rub off with little or no effort and we can see we've got some of that here so I'll have to be very careful when cleaning up the uh, the faceplate. The other complaint is the handle which never seems to last particularly long and this one certainly isn't in very good condition. Other than that though the amp is excellent I tried it out where I was um, when I went to buy it and it was sounding superb. Um, I've since taken the valves out, run them through a tester and they were absolutely fine, spot on. I would say it's been hardly used at all in its whole lifetime. And as you can see the cabinet is generally in excellent condition for its age. So what I'll be doing is completely stripping this apart and giving it a full check over, checking the bias on the valves. This isn't cathode bias, this is what's called fixed bias, which means there's a little pot inside so you actually fix the bias of the tubes. So I'll be checking those out as well. As I say the tubes are in fine condition, uh, a nicely matched pair. The only issue we get, of course, is that the tubes are, the power tubes are mounted right behind the speaker. So that's always going to be a, a bit of an issue for their life expectancy. But other than that, we'll be uh, pulling this apart, giving it a good clean, a service, and making sure everything's hunky-dory.
so here we are we've or i've just completely taken the cabinet apart um, removed the chassis i've cleaned everything tightened everything made sure that all the pots are now clean um as i tightened all the hardware now going over the circuit diagram um for this board supplied by laney it's quite obvious that um only half the components you can see on the top of this quite cramped board are actually um in the circuit the others are all surface mount components on the other side um so again not something i'm particularly happy ever to work on but as everything is working okay um and it was quite nice sounding when i uh, first got it all i'm going to do now is check the bias um it does have an internal bias pot as uh, and um make sure that that's okay now i've had it switched on for a few minutes and currently the plate to cathode voltage is hovering around 308 and we're showing 18 and 19 milliamps on the valves now that's about 48 percent dissipation uh, remembering an el84 is um capable of 12 watts so that's running quite cool so i'm just going about just about to uh tweak the bias meter or oh, the bias pot which is just there and we'll um get it up to probably about 23 Wait. So that's twenty one and twenty two, And 23 okay okay so the final bias adjustment I've made is I've got 24 on one side and 25 on the other we've got a 293 plate to cathode voltage so that would give me um, 7% dissipation on one side and 7.3 on the other side meaning we're at 58% and 61% 60% is considered um, average bias for an EL84 um, 70% is the maximum so I'm going to leave it at that and um, put everything back together
Laney VC15100. Um, really nice little lamp, always been looking out for one and as I say one finally came up that was uh, close by and at an absolutely astonishing steal of a price. Um, the only issue with these, as with all modern amplifiers, and this is a made in the UK one, um, is that they're not really that serviceable. The um, circuit board is quite heavily populated as you saw, but if you look at the circuit diagram, I know you can't see that particularly, but uh, you know, um, there are far more components on here than there are actually showing on the circuit board. Just wait for that to focus again. They are showing on the circuit board. Um, the underside of the circuit board has a multitude of surface mount components, and in fact, the parts list that comes with the service document only lists a few components, um, and it says PCB complete. You can buy various bits and pieces. Um, but it's not what I would consider a long-term serviceable amp, which is, I say, the major reason why I've started building my own amps um, from kits like Modulus or Amp Maker before they closed, um, because they are truly serviceable and sustainable long-term, whereas I'd have issues with something like this I don't know if you could even still get a circuit board. I mean, this is nearly 20 years old now. So is a circuit board um, still available from Laney? I don't know. I'll, I'll ask them if it ever goes wrong. Um, which, of course, you hope it doesn't ever go wrong. But if they do go wrong, they're not really that serviceable. Um, to service the main circuit board and get at some of those surface mount components which are very difficult to uh, service anyway um, you would have to take out the complete circuit board and as you saw um, from the when I, I went along the board that all the um, pots are mounted onto the circuit board so those would need to be unfastened there is some slack in the cable but without trying to take out the board I don't know if there's enough to flip the board over and work from the other side but there are things attached to both sides of the circuit board the, um, the controls at the front and obviously the valves um, are, are wired from the sockets which are nicely wired nicely mounted on the chassis but then they're remote wired into the, the circuit board um, and obviously things like the effects loop and the outputs and the um, the HT side and the mains input are all wired into the circuit board. So it's, it's quite a disassembly job and would be, I would think, expensive for tech to do it for bench time. Um, so, as I say, I don't think it's really a serviceable item <coughs> as are most amps it would seem this day, these days. But, as I say, Really nice amplifier, nice sounding.